Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. And welcome to another edition of Homie Picks. It is week four, NFL. It is me, it is Lou, it is Ben, and we are joined by a special guest. Uh, he's, he's a friend of the show. He's been here before. You know, the the the, the ultimate Viking, <laughs> you know, not, not tell. four. <laughs> he's not Seriously, four. how can you tell? <laughs> he's not Thor. He's not from Valhalla. He's from here in New York. He is Danny. He is the Viking fan. D, what how, how, how you feeling, brother? 3 0, undefeated, baby. How, how mm -hmm. else am I supposed to feel? He's feeling he's feeling really fine. Okay, nice. I like that. <laughs> Lou, Ben, how y'all feeling? Benjamin? <laughs> Not too bad. I'm feeling pretty good. My picks were were weren't so trashy this week. So I must say I'm feeling on the up and up. Hey, Lou. I'm feeling good. I mean, at the time of this recording, my Giants found a way to lose. So, you know. <laughs> All right. We're, we're also, chugging along on that path. Chugging along. But also, or at the time of this recording, they also found a way to win. So <laughs> and that was something that you did not predict seeing this, no, this whole no. season. Yeah, and here we are. Here we are. They got one win, and I think that was our Super Bowl, our 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 homecoming, our you know, prom, everything, you name it. Our election, everything all wrapped in one because um, they still can't beat the goddamn Cowboys. We're like 0 oh, 13, 0 oh, 14. Yeah. Giants yeah they, they said that was Dak's 13th win against uh, the Giants. Yeah. Fun fact Daniel, Daniel Jones has not thrown a touchdown at MetLife in the last four home games. Really? Aaron Rodgers has more touchdowns the last. <laughs> couple games at MetLife than Daniel Jones going back to last season. Damn. I mean, that's a hell of a stat. That's a hell of a stat. I mean, Crazy. I would just yeah, have you only got one game there. It's just one game. <laughs> one game. I mean, I, I was happy that I was at least right about saying Aaron Judge is going to hit more than three home runs this week. But <laughs> And also for that, Yankees also did clinch. Yes. So we will see y'all yep, in the yep. postseason. We will talk about we will talk about some a little baseball um at another time. But it is football. It is week four NFL time. Um, we're gonna lead off with uh since Ben had such a good week last week, we're gonna live with his team. Um <laughs> you got Pittsburgh at Indy. Currently, right now, Pittsburgh is a two and a half point favorite, minus 134. Over under 40 and a half. Um customary the 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 the, the person who whose team it is goes last. So Ben, you go last this round. Lou, how you seeing this? Uh Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, shout out to Pittsburgh, man, because you know, I, I don't think Mike Tomlinson gets enough credit for what he does with the players he assembles. Um ain't nobody had Justice Fields being three and this the start of this year. Ain't, ain't nobody, I don't care. How great those odds were to take. Ain't nobody had Justice Fields going 3 0 to start the season. Um, I think they continue that wave because I think Mike Tomlinson doesn't put them in a position to look stupid. Um, so I think they continue just leaning on that defense. TJ Watt is playing out of his mind. Like he is the scariest guy on the field. Like you have to account for him literally 24 7 where he's on the field, where he's sitting on the bench, where he's sitting in the locker room. Like, somebody got to keep an eye on that dude. Um, so I'm, I'm taking Pittsburgh, and I, I think, yeah, I think they do cover that two and a half. Okay. Uh, Danny, I know this is not uh, your team, but uh, how do you see this one coming? I'm going to have to agree with Lou on that one. Um, I always said, even when Justin was – in in my in my division when he was on the Bears that he was uh, he had shades of being a great quarterback and he's sh he's showing it now. But it also comes down to like with with Sam Darnold and and Geno Smith. You know it depends on the coaching and how it, it they develop the quarterback. If you have a good quarterback, he's going to be the leader of that team and do what he's got to do. And he's showing that he's capable of being a leader, and that's why they three and zero. So, two for the Steelers. You ain't going to get three from me. So, 
<laughs> As I told y'all, if anybody's watching the show, y'all know I'm a Baltimore fan. You know I hate Pittsburgh. You know I would never <laughs> want to go for Pittsburgh. So <laughs> I'll ride. I'll ride. I will ride for the loss if I have to. Nah, um, Pittsburgh is doing pretty good. I, I will admit that. Um, the smart money is on Pittsburgh. I get that. Um, I also know Pittsburgh ain't gonna go undefeated. Uh, at the same time, uh, I know it's an Indy. Uh, all I need Indy to do is keep running the ball. Run, let you got youth at you got youth at the uh, the quarterback position, and Pittsburgh is probably going to exploit that. Um, you're going to need to have a hell of a run game against that crazy good Pittsburgh defense to even have a chance. Because if not, their defense is going to feast on that young quarterback. Because um, I've seen some wild throws. Um, you know, against the the who was Indian Bears or yeah, it was Indian uh, Indian Bears recently, and I've seen some wilds like it was Caleb and and and, and Richardson going for who could be who, who could, be, who could worse? be the worst <laughs> could be the worst at this moment. So um, you can't have that kind of game against against Pittsburgh, and I think you know against really good competition like that at home maybe. Maybe you can get it down to a three point game and actually, you know, win it out at the end. So I'm actually really going to go for Indiana, um, uh, you know, uh, Indianapolis on this one. Um, hopefully, upsetting, you know, the the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Then uh, take it away. How you feel about your team? Well, I mean, as you mentioned, we had that roller coaster last week. We did come out with the win, thankfully. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't deny it. Pittsburgh's been doing really well. Justin Fields is hitting his stride. He's looking average right now. He's looking better than what he did in, with the Bears for sure. Um, but yeah, the the big thing is the Pittsburgh's um defense. I mean, they, they are they are pretty dominant defense right now. Um, so it makes it a tough tough game for us, particularly like you, we know Richardson's still young. He's still learning. He still makes a lot of mistakes. Um, but at the same time. I, I'm still going to have to pick the Colts here to win this one. I like our line. Our line's, more than, I think, top five right now in the league. I think we might be able to manage some of that pass rush from Pittsburgh and create some holes for, for JT to run. So that's basically our, our biggest thing is we have to run the ball, take you know get some control of the clock, which we haven't been doing a lot of lately. But I think we can do it. We have been in Pittsburgh before. Granted, different quarterback and in, in back there. Um, but... I just at the same token, like Pittsburgh has been Atlanta, which, which, you know, Kirk Cousins was just coming first game off the Achilles. And then I believe it was uh, the Chargers and their O line was beat up. Justin Herbert was beat up and the Broncos. So it's not like exactly like they've played world beaters either. And, and they haven't really blown out these teams. I mean, they barely beat the Chargers. It was until the fourth quarter, the last five minutes that they really pulled away. So I, I give my team a chance here. I think we'll pull up the upset. I know we're the underdogs in here. I think, um again, Richardson's going to have his up and down. Hopefully he can make a few of the layups because that's really what's killing us. If he can make some of the easy throws, the explosive plays will come. Um, so, yeah, I, I am our, our team's a little banged up on defense as well. I'm not going to front. So it's going to be a tough game. I think it'll be a really low-scoring game probably. But I'm going to take Indy here. I like that. I like that. Um, I, I, I hope anybody, I hope the rest of the team, I hope, I hope the rest of the year, Pittsburgh goes um, owing everything else. Um, <laughs> to the next game. Uh, <laughs> to Philadelphia at Tampa. Uh, Philly has had a really interesting start, start of this season. Um, right now, they're a one and a half point favorite, <laughs> minus 118. 42 and a half over under. Um, Danny, how are you feeling about uh, either of these teams' chances to, 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 to win it? I don't know. Um, honestly, Philly looks a little lost maybe because they don't have that centerpiece like they did la the last few years to help get them through, to give them that little push, so to speak. Push, push. Um, <laughs> um, but I don't know. Tampa's looking kind of, kind of okay too. Baker Mayfield. I mean, 
he's another one that's made a turnaround in the quarterback position that I think a lot of people have wrote off. And he's also on like on a little revenge tour. He's like, nah, I still got this. I, I can lead my team to the promised land. He proved it last year. You know, they 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 went pretty they went pretty deep last year when nobody thought they were gonna do anything because Tom retired. So I'm gonna go with Tampa on this one. I like that. I like that. Uh Ben, how you see it? Yeah, this this one's interesting too. I mean, it's it's gonna be a close game just because of the injury factors on both teams. Um, Phillies without Devontae Smith, I think he's still in concussion protocol. Um, their defense hasn't been great. They did step up a little bit last game. Um Tampa got killed by the Broncos in the last game. But Broncos have a sneaky good defense. So I you can't um sleep on that side of the ball for them. Um but I think this is kind of like a little bit of a bounce back game for uh, for Baker. Like he had he didn't have a great game last last game. I think Mike Evans and Godwin can get open on this secondary of of the uh, Philly. So I'm gonna rock with Tampa here. I I think they're gonna win out here. Again, I think Baker has a better a better showing. Again, it's in Tampa. He'll be a little bit more comfortable. Philly's just coming off that win. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's just really because you don't know if AJ is even going to play because I think he he's questionable as well. So I don't know who just have to throw it to yeah. Goddard basically and Barkley. So I don't think they have enough pieces right now. And I just don't trust Sirianni sometimes with some of his decisions, particularly late in the fourth quarter. So yeah, I, I think um, Tampa has the better coach. I'm going to have to lean with Tampa. Lou, I know you ain't going to go for Philadelphia, but how do you think this is going? <laughs> so I'm actually going to flip one on this one. I'm actually going to go for Philly on this one. I think this is Jalen Hurts' statement game of the year. I think this is the game where he runs amok um, and shows his value for that contract he signed. Um, yeah, I know they're a little banged up without AJ, uh, especially with Devontae taking that crazy hit. Um, but Dallas Goddard really played very, very well in that game. Um, didn't score a touchdown. He could have had one if his ass was hustling and rumbling and stumbling down the goddamn side, sideline. Um, but yeah, I think this is like a heavy Saquon, heavy Jalen Hurts game. Um, I think they come out early and score quick. Uh, and I, I see this being a blowout. I really see it being a blowout on Tampa where Baker and their team comes back down to reality. Um, I think the Broncos exposed them last week. Um, and when you get punched in the mouth, you know, by the by the little kid, when the big dog comes around, I don't think he's gonna, he gonna let you get back up. So, um, I'm taking Philly with this. You know, it's funny. I um, uh, I mean, I, if anybody remember uh, last uh, um, the uh, it was the other week when I said I was in Philadelphia um, after they lost against Atlanta, you know, and the 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 town just. As much as there are diehard Eagle fans out there, the town just really didn't feel like it was like uh, they, they they didn't feel like impassioned or angered or outraged. Like the the amount of Falcon jerseys I saw walking around the city is like, damn, like, do y'all not care? But and that's why I kind of have, that's that's kind of that's kind of how I feel about Philly this year. I feel like they care, but they really don't care. Um, I feel like. To 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 Ben's point, it's like something was missing. You know, it's like the Kelsey. Oh, sorry, Danny was saying, it's something feels like this missing there. Um, maybe it's Kelsey. Who knows? Um, but at the same time, uh, Philly is just playing just to be playing. Uh, like they're just here so they don't get fined. Essentially, that's a, that kind. That's the kind <laughs> of feeling I get from Philly. Um, Tampa did get punched really hard in the mouth. Um, pause and. Uh, I think Baker showed a sign of a relapse for a moment, but I do think this is the kind of game that he bounces back against. I think against a Denver team, you're really not really trying to play your hardest or your best against Denver at times. Um, Cause I think nobody really takes Denver seriously, but at the same time, it's the NFL, you know, all teams is bad. At, shit, we just saw the Carolina Panthers have a, have a, have a, 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 a showing against the, the, the Raiders. And the Raiders are the same team that beat the Ravens. So let's like this. This is this is this, this is a league. You know, grown men who play in the ball. You know, you, you know, who play to feed their families and stuff. So you, know, you can't take anybody lightly in this. 
Um, I do think Tampa does bounce back in this one. I do think Baker has a good game. Um, and I do <clears> think I think it's a, I think it's I don't see it being a blowout. I do see it being a high scoring game because both teams have the ability to, to score in bunches. Um, but I do see it being maybe a six point game. Um, yeah, I see it being a six point six point win uh, when it comes to this one. Uh, all right, so. Uh, which brings us to our third game we're going to talk about, and this is a really special one to talk about because we have the we have the inside man himself inside deep into Vikings camp via home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about Vikings at Green Bay. Um, first off, uh, I. I said this to you in, in, a, in a private message. I will publicly apologize to you for me <laughs> uh, not picking your Vikings, thinking they would be terrible, even as far as thinking the Bears would be better than the Vikings this year. Um, Blasphemy. A humble, a <laughs> humble, I got to eat humble pie when I got to eat humble pie. Um, I was wrong. <laughs> I was very wrong about your team. Darn of all um, pro. <laughs> but at the make, same make time, sure it's a big slice, make sure it's a big slice, extra whipped cream. <laughs> with with chocolate chips and everything, cherry tarts, yep. all that. There you everything go. On top. However, in my in, in, in my defense, I'm not the only person who thought about this because even Vegas says the Green Bay Packers are going to be the favorite in this game. Green Bay is a two and a half point favorite. Uh, minus 148, um, and they think the over-under is going to be 43 and a half. Now, hey, I'm going to get your thoughts disrespectful. on this one. I'm going to get your thoughts on this one last. Um, since I had to eat humble pie, I'm going to go first on this one. Minnesota's going to win. That is it. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Justin Jefferson, ever since I, I kept shitting on Minnesota, Justin Jefferson's been going off on a tangent. So, um, and look, and Donald's playing for a contract. I don't care what this thing says. I don't care. Jordan Love was was in the building, not in the building. I don't care who the hell the running back is. I don't care how good the defense is. Minnesota is going to win this game. That's all I got to say. I will stop disrespecting Minnesota in your presence. Ben, <laughs> how do you see this game going? Well, um, I'm gonna have to agree with you on this one here. <laughs> I actually, I I do like Minnesota here a lot. Um, revenge game for Aaron Jones. Um, we don't know if Love is playing. I think he's still questionable, so you might throw out Malik Willis out there again. And Minnie's defense is legit. Like they, I I believe they're top five in almost every category. So, I, 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 I love their defense. Um, Darnold is staying away from the huge mistakes, although Green Bay does have a, a, a secondary that does get some turnovers. But I just look what Green Bay has done. It's been impressive with Malik Willis, but they haven't really played any tough competition. Minnesota has beaten um, 49ers. They beat Houston. So they've gone through some tougher competition. I just feel like, yeah, right now they're probably thinking it's, you know, Darnold reverts back to his usual self, but I, I think this still continues. Like you said, Justin Jefferson still, it doesn't matter who's back there. I mean, last year he had like three different quarterbacks. He still averaged over 100 yards. So I, I, I see that continuing. Yeah, I, I, I like many here. I don't I don't think they're going to lose. Look, I don't know. Should we make this a clean sweep across the board? Um. That two and a half doesn't scare me. That's that hometown discount. That's the that's sort of the <laughs> we're at Green Bay. We're gonna give you the courtesy. Um, I really like what Minnesota does. I mean, Aaron Jones, like Ben said, coming back to Green that's Bay. Green Bay. He he's gonna have a lot to prove and and show him up. Um, Darno is balling right now. Um, he he is playing legit out of his mind, and um, they're still missing. Tight end, Hawkinson is still out. You yeah. know, like, like Addison comes back this week. Mm -hmm. Another weapon for 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 Darnell. Yeah, I gotta roll with Mini on this. I mean, uh, I I don't I don't. The only way they lose this game is if Darnell reverts to the Jets version of himself. 
Um, if he stays clear of that, make smart decisions, get us to Jefferson, rely on the run, rely on that defense. I don't see them losing this game against a Green Bay team that doesn't have their best player on the, on the field. Danny, take it over. How do you see this one going for you, boys? We walking away with the dub in Green Bay. Aaron Jones is going to go up into the stands, and it's no longer called whatever Green Bay calls it. It's now called the Bank Vault, and he's just going to shit all over them. He's going to put on a sombrero. He's going to dance a cha cha in the end zone, and you know, Donald's just going to continue to ball out. He's going to get better with each game. He's got a lot more confidence playing for KOC. KOC really does have a knack for developing quarterbacks and giving people that that confidence to go out and just, you know, ball out and be like, yo, you guys got this. Um, Addison does come back on offense, which gives him another weapon. Uh, Dallas Turner is going to be back on on defense, so that gives B-Flow another weapon. So it's it's only going up from here. We got a lot of guys coming back from injury, so I don't see us losing this game. Yeah, I agree, man. Brian Flores doing a great job with that defense. He's making people see ghosts. So, love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but again, you know, I had to eat humble pie, y'all. You know, I, I'm a man. <laughs> I'm, I'm a man of my word. I told Danny in privacy, I said, oh, bro, I'm going to publicly apologize to you. And <laughs> I, I'm a man of my honor. So, Apology accepted. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, we're gonna come back to your Vikings a little bit later on because I want to talk. I want to talk about them for a little bit later. Um, but for right now, we're gonna to go to our fourth game, which was still is a favorite uh, to go to the um, to, to go to the, uh, the the Super Bowl, which is also your division um, rival at this moment. So we're gonna talk about Seattle versus Detroit. Uh, right now, Detroit is three and a half favorite. Um, minus 196 and they see it as an over under of 46 and a half um lou how do you see this one faring out i mean they let me down last week i like seattle i mean again another former jet quarterback doing what he's doing um but uh i think detroit bounces back uh i think um they figure it out and i know it was one of those weird games for them where I think literally they just ran out of time um, and, and smart decisions down the end. Um, Seattle's looking mighty, mighty good, and they're without their starting running back right now, which which is scary. Um, DK Metcalf is having a great season to start. Um, Jigba, another one. Uh, I think Seattle just keeps finding wide receivers out there. Like They, they just recycle all these good wide receivers. But <clears throat> my faith is in Jared Goff. And Jameer Gibbs, um, I think they bounce back. Uh, I I think they they don't. I don't think they cover the three and a half. I think it's going to be a less than three point game um, where they have to win it at the end. And uh, I'm gonna roll with Detroit, my my Super Bowl pick. Um, Ben, how you see one going out? Yeah, um, <laughs> I I have to go with the home favorites here as well. I think Detroit wins this one. Um, Seattle, yeah, they're undefeated right now, but they haven't. They've they've beaten some s- subpar teams, to be quite frank. What they beat um the Patriots, um, they suck. Um, <laughs> they they I forget who was the other team, but and as of right now, I think Gino only has like three touchdowns through three games. So it's not really him that's doing it. It's been the running game that's and the defense that's been capitalizing on stuff. Um, yeah, I just don't see them matching up well in this one. I think Detroit has a really good pass rush. It'll make them even more uncomfortable. Um, like you said, they're not they don't have the whole ensemble on the offense, particularly on the running back. Um, although their their backup has been doing pretty well, but I think they can mitigate that. And again, Detroit's at home. They're just coming off that loss. I feel like Detroit wins this one. Um, Danny, I know I know you you, you would definitely not be going for Detroit um in terms of overall, but uh do you think they have a chance? Do you see them winning this game? How do you see it going? <clears throat> I mean, it's any given Sunday. I mean, of course they have a chance. But um, honestly, I don't – 
I don't know um, if you heard recently, uh, what's his name? Campbell has been going through a lot of stuff at home with his family and stuff. So I'm not going to, you know, say that, you know, he's distracted, but he's going to be distracted. So you don't know how much of that's going to actually carry on to the field. And when when your leader is distracted and has other things going on, it, it flows down to the team. So as a Vikings fan and them being in my division, I'm going to say they lose. But looking at it objectively, I'm going to say they have a fairly decent chance of winning the game. Go with Scott, uh, the, uh, the, the, if anybody used to watch wrestling, the, the Scott Steiner math, so you have a 33 and a one third chance. <laughs> oh, here we that. go with the Steiner math. <laughs> <laughs> add that to my two and a half, one third chance, you have a 144% chance of the Detroit Lions winning this game. But, um, <laughs> nah, I, um, I agree. You know, if you do have, you know, it, it really depends on the kind of leader that you are. So if you are in a position where things are going on around you, how much of that power can you relinquish to the rest of your team? You know, like, do you still feel that you need to be the leader that you are and just try to shut one one part of your mind out and try to make all these calls and then go into, you know, and and then try to revert back to certain things that's going on with yourself. Um, If you're a good leader and you know what's going on with yourself, you know how to relinquish some of that power. Let the people, let the people you trust around you make those calls for you, um, especially in and if and challenge you in those in those moments where you may be making the wrong call and, and allowing that to happen. Um, but you know, I think the Lions definitely had um, a wake up call. You know, um, you know, because the Lions have not really been playing like world beater great. You know, the entire season so far, and and from compared to last season when Detroit was tearing up the league, this is kind of like, we're just winning, which is a good sign. If you're, if, if, if anybody that, you know, that's Detroit versus anybody, um, which is a good sign. Cause this is, this easily could be the lines of old who just lose just because that's what the lions do. Um, so them winning in this barely winning or scraping by just to win, it shows that the team does have fight. Um, Seattle. Yes. Has not had good competition. Um, that they've gone against. Um, Kenny Walker is a very big factor into whatever Seattle does. DK has been playing great. Um, you know, uh, hats off to Gino, you know, 3-0. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always nice to see ex-Jets, you know, <laughs> doing well <laughs> um, just now in the Jets. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think the only thing that really keeps Seattle in this game is defense. Um, I don't really see Gino doing that much offensively against that really good of a defense. Um, and I think so far up to now, this might be the best defense that Seattle has faced this year. Um, and three touchdowns through three weeks, is he going to cut it against um, a Super Bowl aspiring team either? Um, you got to show more. You got to have a little bit more off to that. Um, so I'm not actually going to say uh, Seattle, not playing. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan. I want to say Detroit. Detroit, I think, uh, wins this one out. I do agree, uh, with Lou. I don't think it's going to be. Um, I, I don't. I don't think three and a half is covered. I do think it'll be a three point um, victory. Um, that's also a Monday night game, but for Sunday night, we got my boys. Uh, we got my boys against the uh, Lord of Mercy. The Red Bills. Hot Bills. <laughs> Red Hot Josh Allen Bills. Um, yeah, that, it's, it's going to suck. Um, but <laughs> right now, Baltimore, somehow, someway, in Vegas eyes, is a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, minus 136 for 46-and-a-half um, over-under. Um Danny, as our guest, um, you know my team is Baltimore. You've seen us be, you've seen us be average, mediocre at best this whole season. Do you think? Do you think we pull this one out, or do you think Josh Allen stays hot and gets this win? 
If your defense gets to Allen early, you win the game. You gotta if you beat Allen's all they got. Who else is on Buffalo right now? Uh, Demar Dead Hamlin. <laughs> the Grim, wow. the Grim Reaper. <laughs> oh, okay, so 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 they got that 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 in in the bank. But honestly, I don't see. Like I said, if they get to Allen early and shake him up, it's in the bag. You, ha- I, I seriously believe that Lamar is a better quarterback, and you got the king with you. You'll be fine. Just feed, just feed him the ball. And, you know, Lamar's got to learn to just, you know, control his throws a little bit better for when he has receivers out in the open. And and, and you guys will be good. I, I'm going I'm to rock with the Ravens on this one. Ben, how do you see this one going? Yeah, so um, impressive showing by Buffalo. It's just killing Spicoli and team. That was it wasn't even competitive. That was a clinic that Josh Allen put on. Um, so that was a very impressive win. But at this point, I'm going to have to take Baltimore here. I think Baltimore's defense is gradually getting better. They're starting to use Henry a little bit better. And just for the fact that it's going to be a short week for Buffalo, shorter time to prepare, and their defense, you know, it's it's pretty beat up right now. So... I think Lamar can take advantage of that, particularly like when he scrambles. Um, it now don't get me wrong. If if Buffalo, I mean, if the Ravens can't control Josh Allen's running, it could make it a very interesting game. Um, that that he's always that factor. Um, you can't count him out. I mean, granted, he had he he doesn't have big marquee name weapons, but he does spread the ball out pretty well. Um, I mean. They got their running game going, and they've limited Josh's mistakes because that's really what's killed him is when Josh goes out off script and he starts doing some crazy throws and fumbles and interceptions interceptions come about. That's really what hurts the Bills. But I think just in this particular spot, after that big win uh, on Thursday, short week for them, Baltimore has a little bit more time to prepare for them. I- I'm going to give the edge to to Baltimore here. I think they cover that two and a half. I think it will be a close game. But to be honest, Baltimore scares me in the fourth quarter because like they just they just can't seem to hang on to to leads. But if they can get a, a, a decent amount of lead and you know control time of possession, I think that they have a good shot. So I'll take Baltimore here. Louis. All right. So I'm gonna go against the group here. Um I'm gonna take Buffalo all for the opposite reasons that you once said. I think Josh Allen doesn't get off that field. I think he just continues to score, 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 um, and keeps Lamar Jackson off this off the field. Um, yeah, I think Josh Allen's out to prove that he can get it done without Stephon Diggs, um, without you know having that. Oh, you had Stephon Diggs carry you, and he made you kind of kind of sentiment going out there um, because he's actually doing it with a whole bunch of nobodies right now. Um, Kincaid was supposed to be that guy to step up and he has disappeared into nothingness. Um, I think five catches over the course of the five, four games, something like that, for yeah. some ridiculously no, low number. Um, but I think I'm just going to not go in unison with everyone picking Baltimore here and I'm just going to pick Buffalo um, to continue rolling and uh, Josh Allen to, to continue to climb that MVP ladder. If I would have told you one quarterback had 700 yards and the other one had 630, y'all would think it would be Josh Allen that has 700. And it's actually Lamar Jackson who's actually outpassing him. However, Josh Allen has seven touchdown passes compared to Lamar's three. Um, you know, of course, Lamar does have a rush touchdown, so that total will be four. But um, also, Josh has two rush touchdowns, so that'd be able to be nine. So, my team scares the life out of me. I love my Baltimore Ravens; they scared the shit out of me. Um, losing to Vegas was terrible. Um, I, it was shades of twenty twenty one. When we were losing almost every big game that we every big 
big league game we had in the fourth quarter. Um, by the time you blinked, we were, we were, we were down. Um, and that almost happened against Dallas. Um, I know I said historically we played Dallas good, and thank God we did come up with the, with the win on that one. Buffalo always seems to play as really good, though. Um, they're not scared. Um, you know, James Cook has been doing um, pretty well for Buffalo. Um, you know, I think Baltimore is the better team. However, I am actually going to say Buffalo wins this game, though. Wow. I'm actually wow. going to think my team <laughs> loses and we fall to one and three. Um, I don't think I don't think we have an easy enough way to get into the playoffs. I think this team struggles still. Um, and that's sad because you're wasting Derrick Henry's time, <laughs> who came here off the strength of faking that. It's going to be a free ride to the Super Bowl. Um, I do think, yes, you know, I think we're not, I think we're going to struggle to get into the playoffs. Honestly, at this point, the way I'm looking at it, I think we struggle to get in. Um, like, I, I, I thank God that Cincinnati has been doing trash um, this year. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't really have that much hope. Um, because I do think that Cleveland, I don't even care about Cleveland. Um, <laughs> Pittsburgh really is the hardest part about this right now. And I think we can catch up to Pittsburgh, you know, um, at some point, because I think Pittsburgh is going to fall back to reality. Um, and I think Baltimore eventually maybe may get the, the, I think to win the AFC North, I think it's going to take nine wins. I don't think Pittsburgh gets that high. I think once they get to like five Maybe, hell, maybe, who knows that what happens after this week? They, they you know they may start to struggle a little bit. Um, but um, I think maybe nine wins is what it takes to get to that point. Baltimore's have to have an uphill battle. I do think Buffalo plays them really good, especially on Sunday night football. It's going to be a tough game for my team. Um, but, you know, tough losses against um, KC, horrible loss against uh, the Raiders. Struggling against the Cowboys, um, especially in the fourth quarter when you have it in the game and you have the game in the bag. Um, I pray I'm wrong for the, for the most part. But um, one thing that does stand out to me is Josh Allen does not have any interceptions. I think the only thing that really can get to that, that helps is Baltimore's defense has the ability to get, you know, to get to the ball. Um, that's always been our knack for the 20, 30 years we've been in, in the league um, as the Baltimore Ravens. Um, that's always been their, their, their MO is to get into the ball. So, um, I do think that is a potential to Josh to throw his first, maybe second interception, uh, his first two in his one game. But if that doesn't happen, Allen stays hot. It's going to be a hell of a night for them. So, yep. I, you heard it here. I'm going against my team. <laughs> um, but I'm not scared to do that. You know, this is, this is, this is, this is how I feel about it. You know, right. I, I, my team does not give me any confidence like, or any hope. Like I said, you you can't be a fan um, when you're betting with money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> when you're betting with money, that's true. You know, and even though you know these bets are, you know, these these things we talk about is it's all entertainment, you know, but at the same time, if you put money on these on these games like I do, I'm sure some of some um, others uh do, you know, hey, you know, you gotta be realistic with your picks. So, you know, I'm Y'all, y'all thought I was gonna go with Baltimore, did y'all? <laughs> y'all thought I was gonna do it, but I wasn't gonna do it. Though. Maybe, but um, hey, you know it is what it is. Uh, this is why we play the game, right? Um, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Before I go into the question, I wanted to ask y'all, uh, Danny, Minnesota. Um, you know, preview wise, uh, what were your expectations coming into the season, and what and well. What were your expectations coming into the season? What are they now, and how do you pre- and how do you see the the, the the Vikings faring out for the rest of the season? Um, it's definitely apples to oranges because you figure, okay, this is the first season that KOC and Kwesi are actually playing with their team, a team that they went out built and and, you know, drafted and are setting up. And everybody was like, 
wait a minute, they're signing Darnold to be their bridge quarterback? They're like, oh, they're setting themselves up for failure already. And then they go undefeated in preseason, but everybody's like, that's just preseason. Nobody plays hard preseason. And then we win game one against the Giants. Everybody's like, Danny Dimes, it's the Giants. No disrespect, Lou, but they're like, it's the Giants. I didn't pick the Giants either that game. It's all right. <laughs> I mean, even Lou said that. So, And then, you know, of course, I had to throw my jabs at Paul. I'm like, yo, you know, good luck on Sunday. But, you know, you got some injuries there, but it might be a close game. And we pulled out the victory. And I started saying, okay, Donald's for real. He this he's he's out there to show that hey I got this I can do this I'm gonna prove all my haters and my doubters wrong and then he put on I'm not gonna say a clinic but he put on a show week three against the Texans you know what I mean he made he he hit Justin he hit Jefferson in the end zone he 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 moved when he needed to move he was light on his feet. Defense played lights out, just about lights out that game. Made CJ look like, you know, it was his first game in the NFL. So all I got to say is that all we have to go is is up from here. Now, I'm not going to go and say Super Bowl. I see playoffs. I see us maybe 10, 11 games going to playoffs. But NFC Championship, Super Bowl, maybe next year. Yeah, no, I ha- I have to agree with what you said because, like, I-, I didn't think they were going to be bad. I thought they were going to be in the middle of the bunch just mm-hmm. because of Darnold, just because of his limitations. But uh, credits to my- to Kevin McConnell, like, uh, he's done a terrific job with him because he- he's really cut down some of the reckless plays that he does. And because they were going to go in with a with the rookie, they were going to go with J.J. McCarthy. But he got hurt and season-ending injuries, so... A lot of people weren't expecting a lot, but they had pieces. Like a lot of people just thought that they were gonna be a horrible team, but they have good offensive pieces. I'm surprised with their defense, to be quite frank, because they let some people go. But yeah, I, I Minnesota's been very really impressive. A big, big shout out to Kevin O'Connell there. Like, like he's really a good coach. I think he's a little underrated right now. The quarterback whisperer. <laughs> Um. Yeah, you know, it's it's been a it's been a been a good. Start. I mean, this is probably the first time I've seen CJ Shroud actually like a rookie <laughs> since he's been in. Like he looked like a rookie, and Look, he's not a rookie. I, <laughs> so. I, I like CJ, but he hasn't been playing like he had to play last year. To be quite frankly, because because I mean, they he was I mean he had good numbers, but he wasn't like really killing the Colts in the first game, and then against the um the Bears. The Bears have a good defense, but like I think, but what did they score like sixteen points, fifteen points, whatever it was. Like so, he's not like lighting it up like he was. So he's, you know, I'm not gonna say he's struggling a hundred percent, but like he's just not looked as good as he has. Random, random question. I just thought of before I asked the other question. Do y'all think this is a Stefan Diggs effect? Because do you think? Because you know, you, you see trolls online talk about. You know, this is what this is what Josh Allen looks like now. He doesn't have Stefan Diggs nagging in his ear, you know, all game long. Do y'all think this is a Stefan Diggs effect? You know, um, that's that that this to this. I'm gonna lean towards a little bit, yes, like not a hundred percent, but when you have that star wide receiver, you just without realizing, without you know, subconsciously, you start to like, I gotta get him the ball because that's my number one. I gotta get him the ball. He's the big name, so. And eventually he will start pressing like, yo, give me the ball. I'm open, blah, blah, blah. So you start you start pressing to get him the ball and you forget about your other weapons. Because look, like, they've really forgotten about Tank Dell. Tank Dell is a really good receiver and they haven't really been targeting him. Because last year it was just between him, Nico Collins and Tank Dell before he went down. So like, I, I feel like it's not 100% there, like the pressure with that yet. But I think subconsciously, probably he's thinking about it. Like, yeah, I got to feed him the ball. He's my big name. I would say the opposite because Minnesota nor Buffalo will be in this position had he not been there. You know, he he afforded them that that luxury. Uh, where 
Minnesota traded him away and got, you know, sold him high on the dollar and, and they got, you know, good return back. Buffalo, I mean, sold him a little lower on the dollar, but, you know, that was one of those addition by subtraction kind of things where it made other players elevate up. Um, and, I mean, he's technically still doing a good job at Houston. He's not the same player he was at the other two spots, but I think he's going to be great for Houston's locker room, um, teaching those young guys how to how to be great wide receivers. Um, and when it comes down time to playoff time, I think the one thing that Houston didn't have was experience. I mean, they'll have some experience now going into the playoffs. So, yeah, it is his effect, but not so more than not so much in the negative form. But I think it's more of a positive. Like he left these organizations in, in better positions than when he got there. Really? Yeah, I I would have to agree with Lou on that one because, um. Had he stayed with Minnesota, they never would have drafted Jefferson. Right. And without Jefferson, we wouldn't have had all those wins in KOC's first year. We wouldn't have had those 13 wins. We wouldn't have had the wins that we had last year. Um, And, you know, we wouldn't have, what, what did they rate him this year? Top five receiver in the league? So, and that's only because he was hurt. Uh, for a good portion of last season, so that dropped his rating. But still, a top five receiver wouldn't have had that without Stefan. So I would have to say I would have to agree with that. You can say you wouldn't have that if he stayed, right? So like it's better for him to be gone. <laughs> oh, most no, definitely. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Like I think even I think even Stefan said it. Like I guess for him to a point that he he feels like he doesn't need to be there anymore. He needs to move on. So he he. He starts. I'm not gonna say burn bridges, but he, you know, the the little diva wide receiver personality comes out. I think he the, he becomes abrasive to a point because like you always see him at the sidelines, particularly in Buffalo. At towards the end, he was just barking at, at Allen. Like, I, I, you know, it gets tiring after a while. You know, like trying to like trying, to, trying to make somebody happy, get him the ball, feed him the ball being when he's a prima donna. There. Exactly. So. It, it, now look at him like he's spreading the ball out like he's not focused on I gotta get Diggs the ball like so now he sends it to to all these other receivers that again they're not like big names but they're capable enough to do something so again I'm not blaming Stefan Diggs and I'm not saying he's not a great receiver at all he's a good receiver but you know just that 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 personality that little edge thing that he does carry with him it I think it does it makes your quarterback think a little bit like, hey, I got to get him. I got to keep him happy. And sentiment is my sentiment on that one. But, you know, I think you feed Diggs when you can, he gets happy. Just let it be, you know. But I, I do think CJ is overthinking, trying trying to include everybody. And there's a lot to include um, on that. Um, to the question of the night, Gronk in a recent interview said that the Pats did not get as much help from the, from the refs as the uh, the Chiefs do. I'm paraphrasing, but uh, he basically was calling, making him calls about how he was getting held and beat up, you know, and they would call offensive pass first on him and how, you know, the Chiefs, you know, essentially were, were kind of like getting these these nice these nice helps. Um, do y'all agree to that? If that ain't the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. I I I don't agree, I don't I don't agree with that either. Like, look in the NFL, bad calls happen all the time. I've seen it against my team. Like, like last year, for example, we would have won our division if the refs didn't. They called a pass interference that wasn't there for, against the Browns. We would have won that game. Like, but it was it was a phantom call, and they won that game. That one game cost us the the division basically. And even this year, like uh, missed calls, like the, I, I think it was um, who they play? I, I think it was the Texans when they played the Texans. He, um, Richardson got slammed down, like literally got slammed down, and there was no flag. Like you stuff like that, like little things always get missed. I seen the Chiefs offensive line, yeah, they jump early, but I've seen other teams do the same thing. So at the end of the day, I think it washes out. Every team gets breaks, just that some are just more noticeable than others. Lou, I think you had something to say with this one. We all know Brady got rules, right? We got the tuck rule. <laughs> we got the, the Brady rule for, for tackling a, a quarterback below the uh, like the waist. Like, 
How, how many Brady rules? We we got the deflated balls rule. Like <laughs> we had so much shit for the goddamn Patriots. Like you can't sit there and say that with a straight face, Gronk. Like what's wrong with you, bro? Like granted, Casey does get some calls. Like wow, they get calls, but Brady had rules instituted for him. The tuck rule, which we all know. Ben knows that one better than everyone, anyone else here. Yep. Goddamn tuck rule. They, they <laughs> bit him in the ass. Like, in the Apple's calls, bit him right in the ass. So, for Gronk to say that's kind of reckless, uh, I think he was speaking more from a personal standpoint. Him as a player, he doesn't get calls. But his team overall? yeah. The, the NFL was like, y'all good? You good? You good? You want some juice? You want some juice? You good? All right. <laughs> We will help you out. We got you. You know the what I'm saying? Way, yeah. The way they help the Chiefs is no different than how they help Brady. Like this, the it's the darling. Mahomes is their darling. Mm-hmm. Brady was their darling. And yeah, they're gonna do some questionable calls today. I mean, look, if, if Paul was on this call, Lord knows he would have a litany of <laughs> oh, yeah. of of, of, of time stamp moments where where the Chiefs were holding on, on the 49ers and we we're not even gonna go to that. But that was the first picture I, he sent me when I sent him the interview. <laughs> like I said, you know, he's gonna have a whole timestamp, it's gonna look like a whole law and order lawsuit, so you know, documentary and shit. It's gonna be crazy. But yeah, I, I think yes, the Chiefs do get more calls than the average, but at the same time, you know, uh if you play good enough, you win. Simple as that. Um, where at times it felt like you know, and I, and I think it's because it maybe it's it's tied into the fact that both teams have won so many Super Bowls in such a short period of time. You know that it's starting to look a little familiar in terms of referees' help because you can't win without yeah. having a little bit of luck on your side. So I think you know there's something to that. But to Gronk to say that tongue in cheek like that, while it may have had personal ties to it, um, revisionist history is a motherfucker, as everybody would say. Because <laughs> if mm-hmm. you look back. On- in a short period of time, you're thinking back to just a short period of time over the long history of the Patriots, they got help. Um, not even just from the refs, but from the executives. Anyway, <laughs> um, tell us we're right, tell us we're wrong. Danny, it's been a pleasure to have you back on the show. Um, look forward Thank to you seeing you again. Um, like, share, subscribe, tell us we're right, tell us we're wrong. If you like the merch, hat, you know, hats, I don't have a hat on. My bad. Uh, shirts. <laughs> Everybody else, you know, hit up A2021vision.com uh, store. Um, we'll see y'all week five and go Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> yep. hey, I'll say the Browns win this week. <laughs> Thanks. I think win too. But <laughs> later, y'all. Later. Peace.